Okay. Right, is that going? Ah. All right, we're finally going. Hey everyone, how you doing? Look, um, this was meant to be a members only stream, but I started the stream and then Streamlabs disconnected after four seconds. What a rubbish app. Seriously. Ocean Buzzy, how are you mate? Rich and Leo Angling, welcome. Monica, hello, and Ross Leek, how are you? I need to just put out a little thing. Hang on, fam. Just, I need to change the title and do a few other things. Just excuse me for a second. Just, you know, very frustrating with IRL streaming. You know, they just cater for gaming streams and that sort of stuff, and they're not really interested in IRL streaming at all. So you can tell that with the apps. They're just rubbish. Right, that's work. Okay, so I need to... Uh, Excuse me for a second. Sorry about these people, but this is what happens. Matty Cuz, how are you, mate? Agent Cal Gibbs, welcome. Thanks to the eight people that have tuned in already. go through all this again. <clears throat> Alright everyone, let me just get this sorted. Right. Okay, don't forget to like the stream everyone. Please go through and like the stream so YouTube knows what we're trying to achieve here. I don't have Discord on there. Sorry about this, Famo. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right with you. Okay. Just give me a minute, fam. Very sorry about this. Oh, man, just a nightmare. You know, you just, you try so hard to do something and then you just, no tags.
Cyber Trouts, how are you, mate? Welcome, bud. Okay, live stream, great. Thank you. Two more minutes, fam. Yeah, do it, mate. Grab a beer, buddy. That's not what it... That's one good thing. You know, you bust your chops to get a stream started on time and then you get there and, you know, it's just not going to happen anyway. No, no one can embed my streams. Still our views. Okay, fam. Oh, Streamlabs is a horrible, horrible app, Cal. It is a horrible, horrible app. It is just so bad, it's not funny. Seriously, it's just a horrible, horrible app, mate. And... Oh, really? Oh, Gav, how are you, bud? All right, thank you to the 12 viewers that have come in. And the other thing is too, right? I mean, um, you know... We make, uh, you know, YouTube ads and all that sort of stuff is different to Twitch because, you know, we've got the um, monetization now on that. And you do the stream, right, and um, they don't turn it on, you know. So, really, thank you. Right. Yeah, Streamlabs is a horrible, horrible app, mate. It is just a total waste of money, cow has been from day one. Okay. Video details, we'll get rid of. That's all saved, that's all saved, that's all saved. Thank you to the 13 people that have put up with me since they've been in here. Right, welcome to the stream everyone. Now, we had um, some members. Hey KK, how are you Cal? If you're, a bit, if you're free after this stream, mate, I'll have a yak. <laughs> All right, welcome, everyone. Now, we've been asked by uh, members of the community, okay, how to join lines because um, it's one of those things that if you do correctly will improve your fishing out of sight. Now, I don't know every single knot that is out there for joining lines. I don't know every single knot. Hey, KK isn't a mod on here. Hang on. Let me just sort that out. Add moderator. All right, KK is now moderator for your channel. Excellent. And um, so one thing you'll do too with the um, invention of braid, and we love Fireline here, okay? A lot of people like to use, <coughs> excuse me, what's called a shock leader. So all that basically a shock leader is, if you want to break it down into English, okay, is... Just say that's the spool of your reel. You put a length of monofilament, okay, and join it to the braid like that, okay? And then what you do is you tie all your knots to the monofilament. Hey, Phil, how are you, bud? Good to see you in here, mate. Thanks for coming in, Phil. And uh, what that does is um, that allows you to tie knots to your monofilament. So what we're gonna do first, okay, is I'm gonna show you how to join Two different lines okay and what I've done here is I've got a a spool of 130 pound Dacron which is an old old line this is the old hollow line that was out pre braid okay um, that's a uh, absolute classic the old Dacron and um, it's 
uh, line that's been around a long time, used by people on boats and all that sort of stuff. Right? So what I've got here is, um, I've got 50 metres of a 100 pound test, and what I'm going to do is use a couple of different lines just to accentuate this, right? And what we've got here is we've got some 80 pound Schneider line. I like Schneider line, a lot of people don't, but anyway, each to their own. Right, Snyder line is um, affordable, has very good coatings, and ties beautiful knots. Okay, now let's get that in here. So, what I've got here, okay, first thing I want to do, the first knot I want to show you today is what we call the barrel knot. Okay, so we have a hundred pound triple fish and 80 pound Snyder line. Hello, Skyquake Warrior, welcome. Now, one thing that people make a mistake with is when they're tying um, their knots, they always try and do it with their non-preferred hand to get it to do most of the work. You don't need it to do that, Famo, right? So, what I'll do is I'll show you how to... This is the first knot that I ever got taught on how to join line, okay? And then I'll show you another knot that's really good for joining line. So, there's our 100-pound. We'll bring that in a bit. Why not? There we go. So that's a 100 pound triple fish and also 80 pound Schneider. Right, so we'll just bring that up a bit. That's where we need to go there. Right, Charlie, yeah, good mate, just busy, bud. You know what it's like. So, what I'm going to do is this is how you tie a barrel knot. Now, you've got to remember there's certain rules that you follow when you are um, like. Uh, tie your knots. Some fishing lines that are monofilament don't work well with other fishing lines, okay? There's some that have different coatings, they have slightly different properties, so with that um, it's just a question of um, finding one that works. We should be okay with this. This is a very hard line and very brittle because it's leader material. This is um, you know, just your conventional fishing line. So, this is what we're gonna do. When you've got heavy lines, like say, 50 pound and over, you don't need to use as many knots because it's quite strong anyway, okay? Now, when you tie your fishing line, okay, what you've gotta do is you've gotta think that even though this is a thin piece of monofilament there, right, what we have is we have the top of the line here and we have the bottom of the line there. And if you look down at it like that, Right, you have left hand side or right hand side, however you want to do it is up to you. Whatever you do though, just keep it consistent, okay? So with the barrel knot, what you do is you always hold your fishing lines in your non-preferred hand. Now I'm ambidextrous, right? Hey Jack, how are you bud? Right, so I'm ambidextrous so I can do things left or right handed, but this is my preferred hand for this, right? So, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave myself enough line here to work with, okay? So, what we're going to do is now we're going to do a good old-fashioned barrel knot to join two lines together of similar thickness, right? So, what you do is you cross the lines over like that and pinch it where they join, right? Don't pinch it here, don't pinch it there, right? Pinch it there, okay? See where the two lines are. Now, what I'm going to do, right is I'm gonna go around this uh, clear line here, okay? Now we go over, left, under, right, come back over. So one, two, three, four, five, right? So what we've done is I've done five wraps around the line there. Then what I'm gonna do is, right, I'm gonna clamp that down here, right? And then I'm going to bring that in there and I'm gonna hold where I've put that clear monofilament over this loop, and I'm gonna hold that down so it doesn't move, okay? And then I'm gonna leave a little circle there to work with. One, two, three, four, five, All right? Then see how I've held that down? What I do is, because I've already done the hard work with the tag in there, I'll bring that through here, and see how the lines have, um, Contact it now, yeah. A little bit of spittle, all right? And gently, gently, never ever yank on knots. Okay, form 
your knots. Now see how those lines are posing one another? That's a good sign that we've done the knot properly. So there we go. What we've done now is we've effectively joined 100 pound uh, leader to 80 pound main line, okay? See that? And even the knots have opposed one another so they're perpendicular, so we've tied that knot perfectly. See that? See how that's come up? Look at that. Check that out. See that? That's a perfect knot. And what I've done is I've shown you how the two lines, because what people do is when they try and tie the barrel knot, they'll wrap it around five times, then they'll grab it and they'll try and bring the other line around and wrap that around all the rest of it. Don't do that. Wrap it around with one line, clamp on it, put the tag in back through and down, make your little circle in the middle, wind it around, put it back through. And then what you've got is you've got your little barrel knot like so, okay. Ta-da! And you can see that's clearly highlighted by um, the two different coloured lines there. So we have the clear triple fish leader, and then we have the uh, Schneider line in the 80 pound, okay? And that has, you know that won't break under 80 pound, okay? So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just put that away now. We'll keep that for reference for another day. Now, what happens if you've got 30 pound line, right? And you've got, say, 100 pound line like this. That is a little bit too much of a difference in diameter to join effectively with a barrel knot. So what you've got to do there, right, is just, great, I've got two tag ends coming off the reel. Awesome. Right, let me just have a look. Now, Famo, is the audio in sync or not? That's called a barrel knot cow. What I'll do is I'll go through and edit this, right? Yep, I'll go through and edit this. That's for mono to mono, that's a similar diameter, right? Now, what I'll do is I'll do um, 60 pound uh, trace, right? And 30 pound Schneider line, see that? Okay, so we've got 30 pound Schneider line and 60 pound trace. Remember that Centauri knot that I showed you or Centaur knot or whatever it's called? Now remember, right, clamp the line over. So what we're gonna do is, my left hand is my non-preferred hand, right? So we go once, twice each time. We just make the, see the little uh, loop there? It's just a little bit smaller than the previous time. Right, Lionel Richie playing in the background three times. See how each one's slightly smaller? Now, grab your tag in, bring that through here. Thanks, Cybertrouts. That makes a pleasant change with Streamlabs, doesn't it? Now, what I've done is, see how I've already clamped that down on the line? What I'll do is, oops, I'll make sure that I've got my main line and I've got my tag in, because that has happened before. And we'll just go once, twice, three times, like that again. If you don't do each loop slightly smaller than the first one, sometimes it can turn into a bit of a bird's nest, right? Right? So this is a double Centauro knot, look, boom. And see how that locked in? This is a really good way, and a lot of fly fishing anglers, including me, use this. Right? So. There we go. So what we've got is, we've got the 60 pound trace material and we've got the 30 pound Schneider line. And see how that's turned out to be a really nice little knot? Okay. Check that out. I'll make sure I've got the camera angle right. All right. <laughs> so that in itself is another really good little knot. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do Right, I'm going to show you the simplest, okay, and actually the strongest knot that I know to join braid to monofilament. It is so simple and it is so easy, right? Not many people share the knowledge on this one because they want you to make mistakes 
and they want you to come up and buy more braid and more monofilament, okay? So, it's quite simple. What we're gonna do is, this is 14 pound fire line left over from a reel. This, excuse me, is 30 pound Schneider line, right? So what you do is if you wanna put your um, shock leader on here, and I know you've got problems with braid cow, this is how you're gonna do it, okay? Right, so let's, first thing we'll do, we'll just run our finger down there and just see if that like takes the, um... see how that took the twist out of it a bit? Because what happens is when you get to the bottom of a spool like this, because it's got smaller coils, what it'll do, right, is that'll cause the line to go like a corkscrew. Okay, here we go. Right, Sparky plays, how are you mate? Welcome to the stream, bud. Now, this is the simplest knot that I know for joining braid to monofilament, okay? And this is really easy, okay? So watch this. So, now what you do is you get your monofilament, right? And then you get your braid. What you do is clamp that down like that and wrap your braid around your monofilament about 20 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, whoops, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, whoops, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20. Okay, so see how that's been wrapped around 20 times? Let's do it a couple more just to be cheeky. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and see how that's got a really nice even sort of weave to it, okay, in there? Great, so what we do now, right, is we grab that, okay, and you just make a little circle like that. Right, see that? That's what you do. Then what you do is you get that through there. Okay, so. Where are we? Oh, I can't see. Getting old, fam. Right. So, once through the loop there. Nah. For Sean Angling, how are you, bud? Thank you very much for coming in. Best of luck with your streaming, and my hands are tied up at the moment, so next time you pop in, I'll give you a shout out. So what we've done is we've put that through once, then what we do is, notice how I'm clamping that with my left hand, right? And mate, we get our kayak sponsorship this year, pal, so we'll have to compare notes. Two, right? Reach through the knot like that. Three, right? what's happening there and then reach through again right and do it no that didn't work come on bud all right four times you yeah, well yeah we did a lot of kayak angling on the old platform for sure all right so what i've done is i've wrapped that around four times and see how that's already wanted to form the knot now look at that right that's how simple it is to join braid to monofilament that is the strongest and simplest way to join braid to monofilament, okay? Any level angler can do that, all right? You're welcome, mate. And anyone that goes out in salt water in a kayak, because we're gonna be going five to 10 miles offshore, sure, right? So yeah, <laughs> yes, we do have a lot of gray whites in Australia, but anyway, we'll worry about that later. So what I'll do now is, right, I'll just cut that there. Right, cut that there. And cut that there, like so. Right. Um, this knot's that old, I can't remember. It's just a braid monofilament loop join. That'll do. Worse than the fish and chip shop owners now. Right. And what we'll do is we'll test this. That's not going anywhere, Femo. See how that's locked in? Look. 
see how that looks. That actually turned out perfect. See that? Look at that. All right, look. Turned out perfect. Look. <coughs> All right, so it's 14 pound fire line and 30 pound um, Schneider line. That's made an absolutely perfect join. Okay, see that? Absolutely spot on. Thank you very much for Sean. Thank you very much to come in, mate. Good to see you, okay? I've already subbed to your channel the other day too, mate. Okay. Yeah, and see that, cow? That's the easiest way to join braid to monofilament, my friend. And look how nice and compact that knot turns out. And look, so with that, what we've got there, right, that, that's absolutely rock solid. Seriously, I'll show you. That's absolutely rock solid, Femo. All right, look. That's 30 pound mono. That's cutting through my hands. Oh. See the crease that I left there? And um, one good thing is too, right? When you join monofilament to braid and you do it properly, this 14 pound um, fire line, I'm using 30 pound litre. That'll actually snap at 30 pound, believe it or not. There's just something about braid, especially um, Nice cover, Cal. Especially fire line because it's got a longer molecular structure. When you join it to lines, you can join it to heavy line. See, and what it'll do, it'll form a perfect knot and it just sticks. Okay, so see that? Look at that. Right, and that's a beautiful compact little knot, and that'd be a lovely, lovely. Um... Yeah, Sparky plays. We've got a few videos on that, mate. So we're just doing knots tonight. I'll show you uh, another time, buddy. Right, so what we'll do is we'll get it all organized, okay? So yeah, at the moment we're just joining knots. We'll talk about that topic another time. Yeah, so that's the easiest way to do it, um, cow. Now, the other one too, right, is, okay, I'm gonna cut that again, right there. So even with that there, Famo, that made an absolutely beautiful little knot, see? Check that out. Uh, Cybertrouts, the best knot to use to join fly line to leader, right, is to just use what's called a nailless nail knot. So let's just say um, this 100 pound, line is fly, fly line, okay? Right? So this is fly line. It's thick enough to be fly, uh, to be um, uh, fly line being 100 pound, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get some 30 pound um, Schneider line, right? So, um, with your, um, With your, um, so that's your fly line, and that's your leader material, right? It's called a nailless nail knot, which is just another version of the uni knot, okay? That's all it is. So watch. This is the easiest knot to do, right? So remember, right, we go over left, under right, okay? and we cross it over like that, and see how I've grabbed that with my non-preferred hand. The most important thing here, okay, is you have the tag end on the right-hand side of the um, fly, fly line, and then you have the loop on the left-hand side, okay? And then what we do is we come through here, just let me just get this right, okay? Okay, and then what we do is this. Right, so we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you want to make it a bit bulkier. Right now, see how that's um, just gripped around the fly line, which is really the 100 pound lead up perfectly. So what I've done is I'm now going to just form the knot, right? Always form the knot before you clamp it down. There we go. Right, so what I've done is I've formed that. And this should still work on this if we've done it properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work it to the end of the fly line. Okay. Like that. Now, 
see how I haven't clamped down on the knot? Right now I clamp down on the knot because I've got it in the correct position of where I want it. Oh, it came off anyway. That's not proper fly line. But see how that cushioned it? Right? I thought we might be cheeky there and get some grip. But that's like a nailless nail knot or a uni knot, okay? And yeah, they make actually quite good knots too. Some people use them to try and join line and all that sort of stuff, okay? So, but with the nailless nail knot, you don't need to use a nail to tie a nail knot, mate. It's just a variation of the uni knot cyber trouts. And they don't take long to tie up at all. Look, I, I always go and cut the end of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. The funny look on people's faces when I did guided tours and I just cut the um, mono off the end of the fly line and it literally some people went pale. You know, oh, what'd you do that for? So why? We'll just join another one. Oh, but we don't have this. We don't have a no. It might just chill out. Don't worry about it, you know? Right. Okay. Okay, and that's what it does. Right, on your fly line, when you tie it, that's how it'll end up looking, okay? So that's how it'll end up looking on the end of your fly line, see? Right, so then what you do is you just clamp everything down, okay? You don't wanna try and clamp too tight on a monofilament, not with fly line, because fly line's got a PE coating on it that grips. It's not like this. So then once you've tied it and you've got it in the spot, you bring this down, you'll cut that, right? And then you'll cut that. Okay, and then that's how it's gonna look on your fly line. See there, cyber trouts, and for anyone else that wants to see. All right, see that? That's how it'll look. Okay, and that's the same knot that you can join your fly line to your leader with. My recommendation for you, Cyber Trouts, is whenever you get a fly line like a six weight, right? Oh, you don't need to, Cyber Trouts. It's like these um, tapered leaders, but that's how it's meant to be. Um, that's how it is, Cyber Trouts. That's all they do. It's called a nailless nail knot, but it's just a uni knot, right? You just over, under, wrap it through, boom, and it's just a uni knot, mate. Just a very. Most of your knots nowadays are just a um, variation of knots that have been around for a long time, okay? Um, it's like that FG knot. I think the FG knot's a variation of a, they called it a slim, like it's like a slim Albright, but you know, and that's, that's all that really it's about, see? So what you've got there, I mean, yeah, that's, that's not too bad. I mean, this is not proper fly line because it's just hard monofilament. But I've got a fair bit of tension on that, okay, you know? And um, that's um, holding onto it pretty well. And we did clamp down on it a bit more. And cyber trouts, if you're not confident with your knots, right, what you do is you can just put a little dollop of super glue. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a heap of knot tying with fly line. You know how when you tie your nail knot like that cyber trouts and it leaves that V, okay? You can actually do a little trick with your fly line, right? That allows you to remove the V and all you can use is like a little bit of aqua seal and you'll have a beautiful loop. And what you do, Cyber Trouts and anyone else, if you've got fly line, right? Leave about that much line on there, okay? And join your leaders directly to that. But Cyber Trouts, to be totally frank with you, right? Um, you don't need to buy tapered leaders, mate. If you can't cast, a tapered leader is not going to help you. Right? All you do for trout fishing, if you use six pound leader, right? What you'll do is you'll tie like a 20 pound um, base on it, right? That you can join to it. Then just get yourself a length of about 12 pound, say, I don't know, four feet or five feet, and then get yourself a length of five feet of six pound, join them together, and if you're casting spot on, it'll turn the fly over for you, you know? A lot of people spend massive dollars on leaders, you know, trying to get the right presentation, all that sort of stuff. I mean, admittedly, I fish a lot of wet fly, right? 
but you know it's still it's still capable of doing that now this stuff here is dacron right so dacron remember the old chinese finger torture that they do at the old agricultural shows that tightens that way and it loosens that way so this is how a lot of your wind on leaders are done fam they're pretty easy to do now this is 130 pound which is way too thick right but what i'll do is i'll just cut that at an angle so it's more like a needle than a line so see we've got a little thing on there right and then what we do is uh, can i get my eyes to work probably not let's do that right so with the dacron what you can do if i had 130 pound line it would probably be a bit better oops but you can actually push this up into the dacron right and one way sorry eyes are going fam i'm getting old Right, so what you can do is bring it down like that. The worst thing you can do when you're tying knots is rush. Right, just take your time because your knots are the most important thing that is your join between you and the fish, okay? And you don't want to rush it, you know. So what I've got here is I've got this 130 pound Dacron that's going over and what I'm doing is I'm just um, pushing this monofilament, you know, a few millimetres at a time up in there. Right, you can use a needle and that sort of stuff, but when it comes to the thicker stuff like this, okay? So what that'll do, if this was a 130 pound monofilament, it'd actually be a little bit thicker than the Dacron, right? And then what they did in the old days was they would actually get a bobbin, right? And they would um, whip around the Dacron, right? So that it would, um, you know, uh, hold it in place. So there we go. So what I've done there is I'm just pushing that fishing line up into there, right? And then what you can do is as well, okay, see how that goes in, right? That's how some of your uh, old um, slip-on loop connectors work. But what you would do, now see that there, right? If I wanted to be tricky, what I would do is I would bind over that and glue it, and that would hold. But that's a 100-pound line and 130-pound um Dacron so that won't hold but see how that monofilament's gone up into the Dacron see see that right so yeah that'll come out now but what you would do is you'd put a needle through that you'd pick a point I don't know how far down here and then you'd put the Dacron back in through itself like this and then what you would do is cut the little tag end on a couple of dollops of glue and you'd have a beautiful loop that you could do a loop to loop connection with monofilament and that's how you do like a $25 wind on leader okay so that's just a couple of little tips on how to join your arm line the other one that people use too is a double uni knot so if I do a uni knot on one side and then a uni knot on the other um, I don't really like to do that um, I prefer to do the braid mono loop join as you saw it when we made the loop and then on top of that i just like to use a barrel knot for monofilament if i've got the two different sized um, lines what i'll do is i'll just use a double centauri knot because the centauri knots are really good you can join you know line that's twice as thick as another line and it'll form a really good seal and then that way um, you won't lose your fish so does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask okay while we're here before we wind everything up. Well, Cal, worst thing you can do, mate, the only difference between a master and a beginner is a master's already made all these mistakes or her mistakes, all right? Master is not a gender specific term. So, you know, they've just made the uh, mistakes. I've made hundreds of mistakes fishing. I've lost lots of fish due to mistakes, but I don't try and make as many mistakes now. But to err is to be human. I mean, we're not robots and that sort of stuff. But like I said, just think top of line, bottom of line, left-hand side, right-hand side, over left, under right, grip, wind, tag end, grip, then wind again, make sure there's a little loop, bring that through, and then just gentle, gentle, okay? Always give yourself enough line to work with. You know how I had about 10 centimeters or four inches of line either side of there? right and then what that does is that just allows you because if you make a mistake you can grab the line a lot of people try and scrimp on line and that sort of stuff lines a uh, like a expendable fan 
so don't be afraid to use it. And I mean, that little knot that we tied, um, that was really easy to do. Wind the braid around the monofilament 25 times, okay? Then make a loop, right, and hold it in your hand, pull it through four times or five times, right, then a little bit of saliva to lubricate the knot. The other thing is to never yank on your monofilament. And the other thing is as well, when you use your saliva to lubricate the knot, if you have the slightest... Hey, thanks, Matty. I really appreciate the fact that you're in here watching, mate. That's what it's about, you know? Like I said, I just turned the camera on, fam. All right? So um, what it is, if you have the slightest bit of friction, that's going to cause heat on monofilament, okay? And um, that will cause fatigue and then in turn failure usually on the fish of a lifetime. And I remember when I was younger, when they used to have the old metal guides, right? These things were chrome coated. I've seen a big fish take line off a reel. It was an alvey and they're trying to clamp onto it, right? And it took line that fast, the line heated up and it just left a clump of line at the end of it, okay? Because it just cooked. Right, so we don't know how lucky we are with the um, guides that we have today that are made out of the, is it the Arcanite or Acronite? I don't know what it's called, but you know, it's just one of those things. So worst thing you can do is just try and treat everything like a competition, fam. And look, what I'll do is, you know, we'll do it again, right? So pick how long the length of shock leader is that you want to put onto your, usually an arm's length's enough, right? So let's get an arm's length in here. Okay, we'll do it again. It's easy to do something right once, try and do it twice. Right, now remember, see how this is like a coil? Right, just run it between your fingers, not too quickly, because you don't want it to pinch. Okay, and you don't want to create too much heat. So there we go. Right, and what that's going to do is, see how we got rid of most of the coils there now? Just do the bit that you overlapped, great. So, here's our fire line. Right, there's my tag in that I'm having real problems seeing. So if I'm going to do 20 or 25 loops, I need to have a fair bit of line to do it, right? So there we go. Right, like that. Okay, there we are. It's all good. Lovely. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right there, good. So I'm holding on to both tag ends like that, right? Then what I do is I form the loop, still holding on to them, see? There we go. Right, reach through there with the first one, one. Right, reach through there with the second one two, making sure that I'm grabbing the braid and the monofilament, right, reaching through there, and the third one like that, right, and then reaching through there, right, and the fourth one like that, usually four's the magic number, four's plenty, five's a little bit of an overkill, right, now see how that wants to turn straight away, that knows that you've done it properly, a little bit of um, saliva, see I'm not pulling really quickly on that. I'm just gently forming the knot. There we go. I've got both lines in the hand. Look, anyone can do that, fam. You don't need to be the captain of a big ship. You don't need to be a charter boat operator, right? All you need to do is just take your time and then just try and work it out. So what we've got here, right, you've got to remember I'm in a really poor lighting area here, famo. It's just that um, the light's way over there, but the camera's Hey, Big Dan, how are you, bud? The cameras on here are so good on these Samsungs. Right, they make night look like day. You know, there's my tag end. Okay. Like that. Make sure you don't ever cut the knot, though. Right, so you cut that like one or two mil above. The easiest way to do that is just fold it over. Right, so what we've got now is... dun da da Right, so look at that. That is a beautifully compact little knot. Right, I've just left a little bit of um, braid there to show you there. All right, so see that beautiful compact little knot there? Okay. 
there we go. So this is 14 pound um, fire line. This is 30 pound um, leader, but when you have confidence in your knots, right, you do this sort of stuff three times one, two, three. Let's have a look. Uh, how long have you been counting for, Jim? This is the same color as the pavers, so twice. Big Dan, congratulations on a thousand subscribers, mate. Well deserved, buddy. It's a long haul, Dan, but you'll get there, mate. All right, here we go. Lovely. So, this is a chair, right? This is only 14 pound um, fire line. That's the little centaur knot that I just used. You can pick up the chair. Right, hey, Mansi, how are you? So, what I'm gonna do now is, right, I'm gonna reduce this knot again to about here, right, just to show you that you've got to have confidence in your knots, fam, because the knots are the things that join you to the fish, right? Come here. So. Once. Twice. Oops, come on. Three times. Uh, very hard to see when it's the same colour. That's the chair even. Let's go here. Let get out of there. Come on. Out you go. Come on, bud. Right, so there's the centaur knot. Okay. Here's the join. Right. That's pick, oops, it just snapped there, okay? But that's only 14 pound braid, okay? If I had 30 pound braid, I could pick that up. Alrighty, so that's 30 pound leader and 14 pound braid, that's a shock leader. So when I tried to pick that up, it nearly picked it up off the ground, okay? So that's how you know that you're doing your knots properly, okay? And then, um, you know, yeah, Manzi, Streamlabs ended that stream after four seconds, buddy. So it's a bit hard to do a members only stream when Streamlabs mucks it up, okay? So there you go, fam, all good. So any other questions that you need answered, just ask away. If not, we'll wind it up. We do have a new YouTube short that's out at the moment, so I'd really appreciate it if you went and had a look at that YouTube short, okay? And then that way, um, yeah. So if you've got any questions, just ask, famo. All right, everybody must be happy unless there's a delay while people are tying. But yeah, there's just a, oh, here comes the rain. Nearly finished it in time. There you go, that's dedication, famo. Yeah, that's braid to mono, Cal. That's just that braid to mono loop knot that I showed you. Well, famo, we've got a big storm that's coming in. Hear that, oh. It's not on my gear, is it? All right, I've got to go. Thank you very much for tuning in. We've got this storm that's gonna be in here for three days, right? So I need to go, catch ya. Don't forget to watch that YouTube short.